This is China. This is also China. But so is this. And this. Chinese culture and Chinese agriculture offer a unique mix of tradition and change. Former Ag Secretary John Block recently took his first trip to China since his days as secretary with a group of about 30 travelers with the National Association of Farm Broadcasting. He says he was struck by the differences. Well, the China on this trip is just amazingly different. We're looking at a country that is not a third world country. This is a modern country on the move. It wasn't just Block who noticed big changes. One trip participant has been to China more than 20 times. Former USDA Undersecretary and University of Illinois Professor Emeritus, Bob Thompson. Tall buildings in the, in the cities I first saw were maybe 10 stories high and now they're 40 and on up. Infrastructure was terrible. Rural infrastructure was almost non-existent. Every region of China had to be self-sufficient in its own food supply because you simply couldn't move the stuff from uh, regions of surplus to regions of deficit. That growing rural infrastructure wasn't something just Thompson noticed. Here in China, facilities like this already handle massive amounts of grain from around the world, and they're expanding. This port, shown here unloading Ukrainian corn for a trip up the Pearl River to a processing facility, is one of many facilities undergoing expansion in the country. It currently has the storage capacity of about 750,000 metric tons and there's plans to add 400,000 metric tons of capacity in the near future. Not only are these facilities getting bigger, they're getting better. Currently we've seen a lot of clamshells, and also these cranes, and also uh, the good things here, the loader is automatic in bulk into the, uh, uh, the barges. Uh, they are going to uh, uh, improve their efficiency by adding more modern equipments like the automatic loader and also the uh, unloader to suck the grains out of the uh, uh, vessels to increase their proficiency. It's advancements like this that have the attention of farmers like Fred Yoder. I, I really do believe that uh, that we need to pay attention to this side of the world because uh, they're, they're, they're digging in and, they're, and they're, I think they're beating us in some ways. The change goes beyond ports and infrastructure. Chinese consumer behavior is also going through a shift. From the tasty, I like America. For most of the 2000s, that statement would have been unthinkable. But China opening its doors to U.S. beef after a 13-year hiatus reflects growing protein demand throughout the country. China's be become uh, open and modernized and advanced, the money flows. Uh, I mean, in terms of our products, in terms of meat consumption is, is rising, continues to rise, uh, more buying power. I mean, just huge changes in 30 years. While Americans may go to a grocery store about once a week, citizens in China come to a place like this about every day. Shoppers frequent Chinese wet markets as a way to buy meat, produce, and whatever else they might want to buy. But shoppers also have the option to head to high-end malls like this one to higher-end grocery stores. Stores like this might offer shoppers the chance to buy imported foods, including U.S. foods like beef and pork. Restaurants also offer foods with imported meats like this dish featuring U.S. tri-tip steak. The trip, with all its cultural and educational opportunities, was also under the constant cloud of lingering trade issues between China and the United States. The possibility of the market was on the minds of many. We need part of that market. I mean, we, have the, we have the goods to do it, but we have to have an agreement to go through this. And so agriculture is, is a good story for the United States. We have trade surpluses. Unfortunately, we're the low-hanging fruit where we're being used to, to make the other deals. So, but as a Midwest farmer, we, we want part of this deal. I just hope that these countries can work this out and get it settled and go back to doing business because uh, for agriculture, we need markets. Reporting for AgriPulse, I'm Spencer Chase.